tato. Uh, well, welcome to everyone. And uh, thank you, Gayen, for that kind introduction. Uh, these are just seven headline things, really. Uh, just sort to break things down in a way that's perhaps uh, hopefully a bit memorable. So, uh, first of all, uh, Christianity in New Zealand uh, preceded colonialism. It came first, Christianity. It's assumed that Christianity is just part of colonialism. That's a, a, a universal, an international uh, type of narrative. But where Christianity arrives before colonialism, then it can't be part of it. So Christianity first came to New Zealand in 1814, and that's a quarter of a century before colonialism came to New Zealand. The missionaries didn't come to initiate European colonization in New Zealand. On the contrary, they simply came to share the gospel of salvation through Jesus. Now, like everybody else uh, in the world, they had their own cultural baggage and perspectives and customs, but their agenda was evangelism and discipleship, not colonialism. And so the missionaries and Christian Maori too, wanted a Christian Maori New Zealand, and they were most often opposed to colonization. Christianity was spread in New Zealand by Maori. Many people assume that missionaries somehow imposed Christianity on Maori, but there's no way Maori were going to have anything, let alone a new faith imposed on them. And for 15 years or so, they showed very little interest in the Christian faith. And when they did adopt the Christian faith, they did so of their own volition and in their own way. While Christianity was brought to this country by Pākehā missionaries, it was primarily spread by, by Māori to Māori across all sorts of geographical and tribal boundaries, taking the gospel and the scriptures to every corner of New Zealand, far ahead of the missionaries. There was a period when Christianity was booming among Māori, right? This fact has been forgotten or suppressed by many, and others just don't want to know it or believe it. But the reality is that from the mid-1830s uh, through to the late 1850s, some 25 years, Māori Christianity was really flourishing in New Zealand. At least 60% of Māori identified as Christian. Many were baptised. I'm just recalling that on one day in 1846, uh, Richard Taylor and Whanganui uh, baptized 88 Māori adults, just on one day. The high percentage of Māori attended church, much higher percentage than Pākehā settlers did. There were morning and evening prayers and worship in countless Māori villages. Uh, many Māori villages had large churches capable of seating up to or accommodating up to 100, uh, up to 1,000 worshippers. Many Māori were highly versed in the scriptures. This Christian Sabbath was strictly observed. Intertribal warfare was abandoned. There was widespread reconciliation and peace between former deadly enemies. And there was a high code of Christian conduct amongst many Māori. Sure, there was nominalism and syncretism, just like as with Pākehā. The motivation of the Treaty of the Treaty Waitangi was Christian, to protect Māori. Of course, you know, government got its hands on it and lost some of its spiritual clout. But the background to it was evangelical Protestant Christianity. It was evangelical humanitarians back in, Clapham, back in Britain, the Clapham crowd, who persuaded a reluctant British government to take on New Zealand by way of a treaty. And it was evangelical Protestant missionaries who largely persuaded Māori chiefs to sign it. So the honourable and ethical and Christian motivation for the treaty was not to facilitate colonial settlement, but to help protect Māori from the worst effects of colonial settlement. They didn't want settlement, but if it was coming, they thought at least the British government should control it. Sadly, next one, the treaty was only partially honoured. As the number of European Settlers in New Zealand steady, steadily built up and soon outnumbered Māori uh, by 1860. Both the British government and the fledgling New Zealand colonial authorities took the side of the land-hungry settlers 
and as a whole, Māori were dispossessed systematically by law, by war, and by confiscation. This was a shocking breach of promise and a profound injustice. Next one, number six. Numerous Christians protested against the injustices, both Christian Māori, people such as Wurumu Tamihana, and many evangelical missionaries, people like Henry Williams and Octavius Hadfield, strongly objected to the injustices. But they were both disregarded and often vilified by the colonial administration. And the, the colonial juggernaut just rolled all over them. They were swept aside. It would be fair to say too that uh, Christian settlers, and there were many of those, had a huge blind spot generally about the injustice toward Māori. And finally, much damage was done to the Christian faith in this country. And in the face of injustice to them, many Māori became embittered and disillusioned with Christianity, even though Christianity was not to blame for the injustices. Tragically and unfairly, the cause of the gospel suffered major collateral damage and was discredited in the eyes of many Māori. And many Māori, then and now, blame Christianity for that which Christianity never did to them. Now, by the grace of God, there remain many, many fine Māori believers, but the injustices committed by colonial New Zealand society, both then and ever since, remain a significant impediment to the contemporary Māori acceptance of the gospel. So that's the background, that's the history, that's the problem. <laughs> so let's go to the prayer points. Let's pray for understanding, better understanding in New Zealand. So that the Spirit of God will enable many more New Zealanders, Māori and others, Christian and secular, to gain a better uh, and more accurate and fair understanding of our nation's history and the spiritual dynamics in that. Let's pray for reconciliation, that the Spirit of God will bring a deep ongoing reconciliation between Māori and Pākehā. With the gospel of Christ central, the gospel of peace with God and peace with others, and the church actively involved, not lagging behind, but at the forefront of this message of reconciliation. And let's pray for a widespread move of God, that through the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the gospel, there will be a major turning to God among Māori and Pākehā and across all other peoples who've come to be uh, at home in Aotearoa. So there's, there's some background and there's some prayer points. God bless you all. Okay. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you for your notes. Uh, can I just make a point before I start? I encourage those attending, I, I'm going to be a bit plain of what I, what I pray, okay? I've got some very strong feelings about this issue. I believe we need to read Stephen's discourse in the Book of Acts, where he calls out uh, his people for their failure, and also need to read uh, Psalm 78, which says, tell your children what God has done. We've not done well, have we? Be frank. Well, uh, two weeks ago, we had a gathering of Pilot Bay Mob, Wanganui, having addressed other issues of reconciliation, acknowledging the coming of the gospel to Tauranga. And the Maori leaders with us, not a, not a large group, acknowledge how powerful the gospel was. So we've got plenty to build on here in our city of Tauranga, but also that applies across the nation. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for those who came in faith all those years ago. Marsden, the Williams family, uh, Alfred Brown and Tauranga, uh, Hadfield down south. Lord, many came from other, not just CMS, but Methodists and others, the Catholics who came with a measure of the gospel, proclaiming the gospel and good works amongst Tonga the Pena of our nation. But Father, and we know Lord, that without the, the evangelical Christian uh, support, we would never have a treaty. But Lord, we acknowledge before you that we've not done well. And Lord, I believe today that the church across New Zealand have got not the fullest regard for covenant that we ought to have, Father. Whether it be in our marriage relationships or this covenant that you gave us to make a place of, uh, of unity and peace across our nation. 
So, Father, I pray that you would uh, speak to the leaders of your church across our nation, pastors, teachers, prophets, uh, evangelists, Father, to become more familiar with the history of the gospel in our nation and the reality that the treaty is a covenant, a holy sacrament, a holy yeah, sacrament that God gave our, our nation, that this nation would be a place of peace and prosperity and a flourishing of the gospel. So, Father, I pray you bring us to a place of repentance for our failure by our silence and our apparent even collusion with the crown as they have given Maori scarce regard in honoring uh, treaty issues. Even today, in here in Tauranga, Lord, Maori are fighting to get settlement after all these generations. So, Father, I pray you'd bring us to account. I pray, Lord, in these coming days, weeks, and months, and years, the church would t step up and take responsibility for our silence over these years, failing to stand with Maori for whom you first brought us here to proclaim the gospel. So, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way across our, uh, your church. Have your way across our nation. Father, we cannot leave it to the crown to teach our people the history of New Zealand. We, the church of New Zealand, have have enough knowledge, have enough understanding to begin to teach our own people and declare the truths that above all, Jesus Christ must be honored and glorified. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Kia ora koutou. Tēnei te mihi kia koe, Stuart. O te kōrero ki a mātou a te pōnei. Just want to thank you, Stuart, for your kōrero, for sharing with us tonight. And tēnā koe hoki, James, mo te te karakia. Um, me unui tātou, uh, e te ariki a nei mātou o tamariki o, o te whenua nei o Aotearoa. Mm -hmm. Ta huri mai tō kanohi ki a mātou, whakarongo ki tā mātou tangi o tā mātou whenua. Father, we thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for turning your heart and your eyes toward us a small remnant of people of God crying out to you for our nation. We thank you for uh, bending your ear and bending your heart to hear our cry. <clears throat> we thank you, God, for the invitation. There was an invitation for the gospel to come to Aotearoa. It was not an imposition. And with an invitation, there comes a power and authority. And so we just, we remind the spirit realm and we declare that over our nation that the gospel was invited here. And we thank you for the power and the might of the gospel and the transformation that happened here in our nation when, our, when the gospel came. And when uh, my people heard the truth, the word made flesh, heard it spoken, read about it, learned how to read through reading truth, we thank you for that transforming power and might that happened here. Oh. We thank you, Lord, for the good and the not so good, causing us to be brave and to face these things that are not easy to face sometimes as a nation when our past is not always a, a, an easy past to face. But we are brave and we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we will not allow the enemy to threaten us with this past any longer because we have the keys. We have the strategy as sons and daughters of Christ to uh, see the original intent for our nation fulfilled in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you, Lord, for wisdom and knowledge and understanding and guiding us forward in this. We thank you for the prophetic impetus of our nation's history, the name of our nation, the, uh, the Maori name, Aotearoa, land of the long white cloud, land of the glory cloud. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry and the spirit of reconciliation at work, particularly between Māori and Pahia first, um, the healing and restorative development of the covenant relationship, which was the, originally the Treaty of Waitangi, and then through that and using that as a basis, God, we thank you that we can look after other relationships, other nations, other people groups that have come to Aotearoa to make Aotearoa, their, their home. And so, Father, we thank you for the spirit of unity being outworked in the church. We thank you, God, that through unity, Lord, it can, contain, it can be a, a facilitation of what you want to pour out in our nation. And so we, 
we bow the knee to you, God, and we submit and surrender ourselves to you in that, in the mighty name. I roto i tō tātou, ingoa o tātou, ariki a ihu in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.